What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the second episode of the Yankees Avenue Podcast. I'm your host, Dan Rourke, and I got to say, I was quite pleased with the outcome of last week's podcast. One, it just went pretty smooth. Two, it got 1,000 views within three days. My goal was to hit 1,000 views, but it ended up hitting it in two days, which is pretty awesome. And we also gained 100 subscribers since the podcast was released. So yeah, this is definitely going to be a thing every Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. And it's gonna, that's definitely going to be awesome to be able to talk baseball on here every week. So to start out today's show, we're going to be talking about the battle for first base with Luke Voigt and, of course, Greg Bird. Going into spring training, everybody knows Brian Cashman said that Luke Voigt has the upper hand. He, it's Voigt's job to lose, Greg Bird's job to win. Um, but I think something is pretty clear. I think the Yankees definitely want Greg Bird to be the guy. He was the first of this core that was called up, Greg Bird in 2015. He was the first Gary Sanchez. He was the first Aaron Judge. He he was really good in 2015. He had 11 homers, I think, in like 40 games. Slugged 529. I mean, the guy definitely has talent. As a left in a bat in Yankee Stadium, you can see why they want him to succeed. But obviously, things haven't really gone too smoothly for him in the past couple of years. All the injuries, he had shoulder surgery in 2016. He was injured with the ankle in 2017. The problem, though, is that once he was healthy, he only hit 199 for the rest of the season. 11 homers, 81 weighted runs, created plus. Yeah, he definitely wasn't good. And then Luke Voigt emerged onto the scene after they traded Jason Street for him. Hit over 300, hit like 330 with the Yankees, 15 dongs. 187 weighted runs, created plus. That's that's a ridiculous number, 187 weighted runs, created plus. Um, so you can totally see why there is a competition. Voigt's 28, Bird's 26, so the age gap really isn't too much of a big deal. Greg Bird is left-handed, as we mentioned before, but Greg Bird's probably going to need a spring training that he had in 2017, where he hit like four. That was actually my article the other day for Unhinged Yankees. Was that Greg Bird's going to have to hit 450, slug probably over a thousand, unless unless Voigt massively struggles. Don't get me wrong. I mean, if Voigt comes in here and he only hits 200, I mean, right now they're both are off the decent starts. Luke Voigt went yard in his first spring game, a three-run bomb to left center, like an absolute piss shot. Um, Greg Bird was 2-for-2 two two his first uh, spring game. Had a nice double, single. Unless Luke Voigt falls off a cliff, and that may be the case with Luke Voigt this year because, after all, I mean, he was great, yeah, but he only played in, I think, 50 games. Is that what it was? Thir- or 40 games? I mean, he very well could be just a fluke or an aberration for that matter. I mean, it seems like the Yankees obviously do believe in Greg Bird and obviously in Luke Voigt too, but... In terms of just better pure hitter, i got to give the edge to Bird in terms of when they do connect on the ball. But, I mean, not even just Voigt's performance that he had, just, like, the energy that he brought. I mean, from the Sammy Sosa hop to, like, the let's fucking goes, it was like the guy just stepped up. I mean, you can't really ignore Yeah, The 187 weighted runs created plus, that's just a ridiculous number. But either way, whichever way it turns out, unless there's an injury, it's going to be fun to watch. Um, it's already a pretty awesome battle, like I said before. the uh, They've both gotten off the decent starts. But all in all, spring training this year, I think it's actually going to be pretty fun. At least what you saw from uh, Troy Tulowitzki. And I'm, I hate spring training. I, I dread it every year. I'm not one of those fans that just, you know, really just love spring training. Once it, like, I like the first pitch, and then after that, I'm done with it. I hate it. I want the regular season here ASAP. But, I mean, watching Troy Tulowitzki with the leadoff shot to right the other day, I got to say, that, that actually got me hyped up to see Troy Tulowitzki as a Yankee. For a long while, I mean, I've always liked this deal for the Yankees. You can't go wrong $500,000. Especially Troy Tulowitz, he's apparently really healthy. He looks very comfortable on the field. And obviously he had that home run in his first at-bat. But I was somebody that I wasn't a fan of having Tulo block any chance of Machado. Like, I once they signed Tulowitz, I was hoping that wouldn't take him out of the Machado race. And obviously they later, they later signed a DJ LeMahieu, which at first I didn't like that signing either, but I ended up liking that. We'll talk about that later. But I think Troy Tulowitzki really could make some noise for the Yankees in 2019 if he's healthy. If he's healthy, I mean, he's a good player. He's a great player. In 2016, he was healthy. I think he played 130 games or something. He did hit 24 homers. He hit only like 250, but, I mean, it's serviceable. You think about it because the Yankees are just waiting for Didi Gregorius right now. He reportedly could come back as early as June. But Troy Tulowitzki has a, what, three-month stopgap for Didi to get here. Healthy, I wouldn't mind that. And they also have DJ LeMahieu, which at first a $24 million deal for him I wasn't a big fan of. But the way they're describing on using him, I think it's actually pretty cool. So 
They're saying Tula Woods is going to get two out of three days off, two out of three games off. And DJ LeMahieu, he's just going to slot in wherever a guy gets off. So say Glaber Torres needs a day, DJ's going to play second. If whoever's playing first base needs a day, he reported he's going to be the backup first baseman too. He can play third base. So he's going to be an everyday guy just at different parts of the field, like, like a Ben Soberst. So another topic of news that happened this, uh, this past week, Aaron Hicks was extended for seven years, $70 million, and I think that's really a great deal for both sides. And also, I just love what's been going on recently with Luis Severino getting extended, Aaron Hicks now extended, and now apparently Del Matances and Didi Grigoris may be next. John Heyman reported that earlier. But Hicks really did have a good year in 2018. He's, he's been good for a while now in 2017 and 2018. But yeah, 27 dongs in 2018, 4.9 F4, 127 weighted run screen plus. Hicks is probably definitely the best, besides Mike Trout, of course, the best center fielder in the American League. So $10 million per year. I mean, it, seven years. If at first that's all I got word of was seven years, I would have been definitely a little bit shaky. But at $10 million per year, I mean, worse comes to worse, he's bad to year five and six. You just release him or trade him or whatever. And this is definitely really smart for the Yankees to do right now. And for a while, not a lot of people thought the Yankees were going to extend guys. And then, of course, the news came out about Severino getting extended. Now Aaron Hicks, Batantis could be next, Didi Gregorius on the way. But, yeah, it's definitely a good move to start locking this core up. Because, obviously, down the line, if you just let these guys become free agents, then they're going to be commanding much more dollars than you're going to be paying them. I mean, Aaron Hicks, if he has a good year, he's getting way more than $10 million per year this year. I mean, in 2020. With Luis Severino down the line, that one-year free agency that you bought out for $15 million or could buy out with the option, he could have easily been getting $35 million by the time he's at, at that point in his career. But anyways, now we're going to switch over to the question side of things. If you guys don't follow me on Instagram at Yankees Avenue and at NYY Home Runs, make sure you go and do so because that's where I get all the questions from. Right now, Yankees Avenue, we're at 26,000 followers and counting. No, I think 26,000 and like 400. But anyways, first question of the day, Hunter underscore Van underscore Melden asks, do you think that we should make a run at Dallas Keuchel? I feel like this question is just constantly asked, but... If he can come on a one-year, maybe a two-year deal, yeah. But I don't really think the Yankees are going to be interested or involved in anything like that right now. Tristan Perry asks, opinion on Derek Jeter actually being a terrible shortstop. One, I never said he was a terrible shortstop. Oh, and for those who don't know, yesterday on Yankees Avenue, I put out a post. It was a Sports Illustrated cover, an old Sports Illustrated cover of Alex Rodriguez and Derek Jeter. And I just said, um, Derek Jeter and the greatest shortstop of our generation standing next to each other, something like that. Anyways, Derek G, I never said he was a terrible shortstop. It's just that a, a run was better. Everybody knew that. And I wasn't just talking about defense. I was just talking about in terms of who was the better player. It was A-Rod by a landslide. I mean, defensively, Jeter's range has always been poor. Jeter didn't win, start winning gold gloves until A-Rod moved to third. And in terms of just who's the better player, I mean, you'd be a moron to say that Jeter was the better player. D underscore flow S. Do you think Hal will one day stop being a tight ass and grow a pair like his dad and pay free agents? Um, that was a little dramatic, but yeah, uh, no, I don't think it has anything really to do with being cheap. It's just that they're smarter now. I'm way more content with giving Aaron Hicks an extension, giving Luis Severino an extension, Del Matanzas, Didi Gregorius, than going out and signing Manny Machado or Bryce Harper, to be honest. I mean, I wanted those guys, but $300 million plus for both of them. I'm okay. Nav underscore Thomas, good guy, asks, Luke Voigt or Greg Bird? Um, I actually just tweeted something out about this, but and we were just talking about it before. It's I really want to see both of them succeed. Obviously, whoever doesn't make the big leagues is going to be in AAA, but uh, I have to, I'm going to go with Greg Bird. Greg Bird, because of the homegrown factor, I really do want to see him succeed. I want to see them both succeed. It's just... Uh, Bird has the homegrown factor, and Luke Floyd obviously came here over the trade. And I like Luke Floyd a lot. He's a really exciting player. And I think he actually may be the real deal. I mean, even especially at this spring training dong, he hit the left center the other day. Um, Ron Eman 9 asks, what will DJ LeMayhew's role be? Or oh, we already covered that, so I'm just going to skip that one. JayGardner.7 asks, why the fuck is Vladdy Jr. so damn chunky? I don't know what he can hit, though, so who cares? He's going to be damn good. That'll be fun to watch. Underscore Kyle Keegan asks, what is an ideal pickup for this year's deadline? Um, ideal? Well, the ideal situation is the Giants are horrible, and they become stellar at the deadline, and then you acquire Madison Bumgarner. There's that. 
What pitcher should the Yankees trade for Esteban Florial? Randy dot Savage fifty five eight S. Um, Florial, uh, it has to be like a Kluber or a Bumgarner or somebody of that caliber. Yankee captain Judge or Glaber and why? Um, this was actually the name of last week's podcast, but definitely Judge. Judge is going to be the captain one day. Glaber's a little too young. I feel like I don't mean it's in a disrespectful way, but immature to be captain. Judge has that clubhouse presence that's obviously captain material. George Lennis S. Thoughts on trading and do horror for Mad Bum. He's a playoff horse, which is what we lack. Um, I totally would be for that two weeks ago when Manny Machado was still in the market, if the Yankees could have signed Manny Machado. Because then, who's playing third base? I mean, Andujar, the whole thing with trading Andujar for a pitcher was you'd trade him, then you'd sign Machado to replace him. But for Mad Bum, if Mad Bum's having a good year, then uh, we'll see. Underscore EH Sports S. Who will win the 2019 World Series? Yankees. Rich underscore Willis S. Love Lou Foy, and I want Greg Bird to suck. But if he does suck, is he good enough for trade bait? Uh... I don't know. Greg Bird's value diminishes by the day. Thomas Cap asks, why aren't the Yankees interested in Dallas Keuchel? Uh, I mean, they have a full rotation right now, and Keuchel probably, in all likely scenarios, he's going to command more than $15 million per year over multiple years. He's just going to, it's going to happen at some point. Matt underscore underscore S, do you think Troy Tulowitzki will have a breakout year? Well, one, it wouldn't be a breakout year. Troy Tulowitzki has been an established big league shortstop for a long time, and he's been really good for a long time up until recently. But I think Troy Tulowitzki, if he's healthy, and obviously that's a big if, I think, I mean, he should have a pretty nice year, I think. Because he looks, he looks really comfortable, and, he's lo- and scouts say he's in the best shape of his life, so that's good to hear. Epifarmos asks, do you think the 2009 World Series Yankees could have won last year? Um, in terms of winning it all, yeah. But then the 2018 Yankees could have won it all last year. I think the Yankees were better than the Red Sox last year, but don't get me started on that again. Max underscore Wellens asks, would you rather have Giancarlo, Judge, and Sanchez, or J.D., Yelich, and Realmuto? J.D., Yelich, and Realmuto. PZ87 asks, will the Yankees play better against teams that are under 500? Hopefully. Hopefully. Because that was a big problem in 2018. They would lose to poor teams, which you really can't do. And that's, that's what, that was the difference maker between the Yankees and the Red Sox last year. The Red Sox won 108 games. The Yankees won 100. If the Yankees just played well against teams like... Baltimore, the Rays, the Blue Jays, not necessarily the Rays, but the Rays early in the season they did not play well against. Lawson Dot Whitman asks, who's the best player you've ever seen play? Um, Alex Rodriguez, but it wasn't in the prime, in their prime, quote unquote, Aaron Judge. Just Jazz asks, when are we going to extend Aaron Judge? And if so, what would the structure of his contract be? I feel like Judge at some point will get extended. Not this year, I don't think. I think he'll be the last one to get extended. Probably, I think, 2022, maybe. I think he's a free agent after 2022. So I think probably the year before free agency, they'll lock him up for another five, six years, five to seven years. Oh, voice crack. Yeah, but another five to seven years for Judge, I think. So I think we're going to be seeing Judge as a Yankee, if he's good, of course, and nothing changes until he's about 36, 37 years old. Next question is, do you think the Yankees have a shot at 300 home runs? Um, I don't know. I don't care. The 300 home run mark or any, you know, historic home run season total mark for a team I don't give a shit about. They they made history last year in home runs, but they got bounced in the ALDS. Who cares? All right, last question of the day is a good one. Antonio Reconquistador asks, what do you think will happen to the excess infielders if they all stay healthy and in decent form? So obviously what Antonio is referring to is if Didi Rioris comes back in June or July, August, whatever it is, and, you know, everybody's healthy and in decent form, like playing well, what happens? So I think... Troy Tulowitzki is probably going to go back to the bench, and Didi Rioris will be the Yankees shortstop. He is the Yankees shortstop, so I don't really see anything changing there. And DJ will just keep his role, so it really all depends on who's healthy, though. That's the thing. All right, so before we get out of here, just got to let you guys know to make sure you use code NYYHR for 20 bucks off your SeatGeek order. I used it the other day for two tickets to the Yankees-Tigers game beginning of April, and I got it for 11 bucks total. So make sure you guys use that. And every Thursday, 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Yankees Avenue Podcast. Be ready for it. And don't forget to follow me at Dan Allen Rourke on Twitter and on Instagram. And make sure you follow at Yankees Avenue and at NY White Home Runs on Instagram as well. All right, so stay tuned for next week's episode of the Yankees Avenue Podcast, and we'll see you then. Her body's gone like September. She burns through the night like an ember. And all those things we try forgetting, I remember. But we say we all fine, we all fine.